Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is reverse a stack, it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement is fairly straightforward, it says that we have been given a stack and we have to reverse the stack using recursion, right. Now the expected time and space complexity is both O of n for this particular problem but uh, I believe that they have not properly mentioned it. But according to me, like if you try to use only recursion, there is no way you can solve it in O of n. You will have to use some extra data structures as well to solve it in O of n. But if you just want to use simply recursion and nothing else, it will take at least n square time, right? So this is uh, what I believe. I'll show you both of the approaches. First, I'll show you the n square approach, which uses only recursion. And then we'll uh, try to move on to a more optimized approach, which works in O of n and uses an external data structure. Right. So let us see how we can solve this problem. So let me just first create a stack. And let me just also create some copies of it. Right. So first of all, we have these elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Right. So let us try to think in reverse order. So let's say we have popped out all the elements from the stack in a recursive manner. So let's say this was my original function reverse, right. What I'll do here is I'll create a variable top which is going to store my current stack dot top. I'm going to pop the element from my stack and I'm again going to call the reverse function, right. So if you do this much part, what will happen? For each recursive call, the top of the element, the current top of the element will have top of your stack and then you can pop it out and then again call the recursive function. Obviously, it will have a base condition here that if stack dot size is equal to 0, that means you can return from here. So in the recursive call stack, let's say this is the recursive call stack, right. In this particular stack, one element will be at the bottom, then uh, second, third, fourth and fifth. Right. So this will be the value of top variable top in the recursive call stack. Now what will happen? You can take this particular element and try to insert it at the bottom of the stack. Right. So since there is only one element, you can do it easily by just writing 5. Now you come on to the next element. When this recursive call is over, you come to this particular call. Right. And for this particular call, you see that you have 4 and you want to insert it at the bottom of the stack. So now to insert this particular element in the bottom of the stack, let us say we have some other function called insert, right. So it will receive two parameters, one is the stack itself and one is the element to be inserted at the bottom, right. So how can it insert it at the bottom? We can have a base condition if size equals to 0, what I will do, I will insert this element into my stack. Right. And I can return from here. Otherwise what I will do, I will do the same thing as I have done here. I will store the top element from stack dot top like this and then I can just pop this element stack dot pop and again call my insert function. Right. And after I come back from my insert function, then I will just push this top element, right. So what happens in this particular line, uh, you already know what is happening till here, but if I include this line as well, the order of all the elements is going to remain the same. Why? Because let's say, let's say this was your recursive call stack. So at the end you had 5 and you, if you insert 5 at the top of the stack, then it will be like this Then you insert 4 at the top of the stack, it will be like this and 3 and then 2 and then 1. You see that the original stack will be restored if you perform this part. Right. So this part is just going to store the previous stack. The only difference that we have or the only unique thing that we have here is this particular part where I am taking a new element and trying to insert it at the bottom of the stack and all the other remaining elements will retain their order. Right. So let us see it in action. Once I have inserted 5, I would want to insert 4 at the bottom of the stack. So what I will do with the help of this particular part. 4 will get inserted here and 5 will be here. Now uh, this recursive call stack is over, now I want to insert 3. 
So what will happen? Three will get inserted, and remember, all the other elements will retain their order. So it will be three, four, five. And this recursive call stack is over. Now I have two, and I want to insert it at the bottom of the stack. Again, two will be inserted, and all the other elements will remain in their order. Two call is over. Then one will be called, and let us also do a dry run for this particular one. So what will happen? Let us say we call the insert function. Right. We are doing this dry run because this is the biggest example of them all. So let us say that we called the insert function. This is the current state of the stack. Right. So what will happen? In the first recursive call stack, let us also maintain a, a new recursive call stack. Recursive call stack. So first of all, what will happen? The current top element is five. So five elements will be stored here. Then it will be popped. So again, insert function is called. So now four will be popped. And again, insert function is called. So now three will be popped, and then two will be popped. Right. Now the size of the stack is empty, and the value that I wanted to insert is equals to this particular value bottom. Right. So now let's say this is the final stack. Right. So first of all, one will be inserted. Then this recursive call stack is over. From here, we come back to here. Now we see that the top element was two, so we insert two. So this call is over. So we come back here. Now we see that the top element is now three, so we push three, and then this call is over. We come back here. Now again, we will see that the top element is currently four, so I am going to push four here. So this call is over. Now the top element is five, and I am going to finally push five here in my final stack. So you will see that with the help of this insert function, we were able to insert a new element at the bottom of the stack without disturbing the order of the other elements. Right. So the problem with this approach is that this whole approach is O of n square. Right. Although the constraints are such that it is also going to pass in today's problem of the day, I have tried it, but it is not recommended to use this approach, or for obvious reasons because the expected time complexity is O of n. Right. But this method is also valid and uses only recursion. That is the only reason why I told you this method because it does not require any other data structure. So I hope that you guys were able to understand this part. And in the original remove function, you just have to do one more thing that you ha also have to call after this reverse is called. You have to call your insert function, right? So in this insert function, you will have to pass your stack and the element that you want to insert at the bottom, right? Which is essentially the topmost element from here, right? Now let us have a look at a more optimized approach and a much simpler approach than this. All you have to do is is maintain an external data structure like a queue. So let me just create a stack and a queue as well. Right. So you all you have to do is nothing. Let's say you have these elements. At each recursive call, you will take this element, right? Pop it from the stack and push it into the queue, right? So let's say you pop it from here and push it here. Now again, call your recursive function. Take the top of the stack and push it into the queue. So now two will be removed from here and two will be stored here. Again, in the next recursive call stack, you will take this particular three from the top of the stack and push it into the queue. Right. So three will come here and it will be removed from here. Similarly, for four, four will go here. And at the end, element five will go here. Now, when you realize that your stack is now empty, so you will check this condition in recursion that if stack dot size equals to equals to zero, then you're just going to return from here, and you're not going to do anything, right? Now, when you come back, what you will do? You will take the front element from this queue and push it into the stack. So now one will be here. So now this element will be removed from here. Now you take the next element from the front of the queue and push it here. Similarly, two will be removed. Then three will be stored here, four will be stored here, and five will be stored here. So you see, with the help of an external detector, in this case it is a queue, our task becomes much more simpler, and it works in O of n. So the space complexity, if we just uh, include the recursive call stack space also, so it will be two n. So one n is for the queue, and the other n is for recursion. But you can also take it to be O of n, right? 
Now the space in the time complexity is both O of n and the code is also much much simpler. Right. So I hope that you guys were able to understand this part as well. Now let us have a look at the code. I'll show you both of the codes. First the n square approach using only recursion and then this particular optimized approach using a queue. So here we have it. Let me just go to my submissions. So you see both of them are correct. Both of them have been accepted. Now let me just show you the first n square approach. So what, I, what I've done is this is my reverse uh, function which is being called by the main function. If the stack is empty at this position, I can just return from here. Otherwise, I can store the top element from the stack in this top variable and pop it from the stack. Now I will call my reverse function again and then at the end, I'm going to call my insert function. So this insert function is going to insert this particular uh, element at the bottom of the stack. So I've taken the same variable names here. It would be better if you just take the bottom variable here instead of naming it top just because you want to insert it at the bottom of the stack. Now when the stack is empty, you can just push this element into the stack and then return from here. Right. Now you can take the new top as stack.top and pop this element from the stack. Again call the insert function and at the end push this element new top into the stack. So this part will do nothing. It will just uh, it is just going to pop the elements and then reinsert them again. So the overall approach is n square. So why is it n square? Because this reverse function is going to call itself n times for the size of the stack. Similarly, this insert function, this insert function is also going to call itself n times in the worst case, according to the size of the stack, right? Because we are popping elements one by one. So the overall time complexity is O of n square. Now let us move on to the optimized approach. So this is my second summation. What I've done is I've created a queue and I've created a function called fix. So I'm just passing my stack and my queue into this fix function. So if my stack is empty, I can just return from here. Otherwise, I'll take the top element from the stack and push it into my queue. And then I pop it from my stack. Then I call the fix function again. And then I take the front element from the queue and push it into my stack and then pop it from my queue. So you will see that this code is much shorter and simpler than the previous code. And it works in less time as well. So I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and if you're able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.